If you want to create your own greeting cards, but you do not want to spend money on special software or be limited by commercial greeting card software formats, you're in luck. It turns out that with just a little effort, you can use LibreOffice Writer to create custom greeting cards. The following instructions are for creating a four-page greeting card by folding an 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper in half twice. Most office supply stores in the USA carry envelopes that are designed to fit this size card. Look for envelopes that are 4 and 3 eighths by 5 and 3 quarter inches. Now if you're outside the U.S., you have to adjust the measurements as required. The first step is to determine the relative orientation of the four pages of your greeting card. In this example, we use a portrait layout card and landscape layout could also be used. Take a piece of paper and fold it twice. For the vertical portrait format book fold cards in this project, the sheet must be folded in half twice as shown. First, fold the sheet in half along a horizontal line, then fold the sheet a second time. Once you've folded your sheet, write the names of the four pages of the final card on each page and then unfold the card. When you unfold the sheet, you'll see how the four pages have to be arranged. I've started LibreOffice and started a new Office Writer document. Then I've gone to File, Save As, and now I have to decide where I'm going to put it. So on my hard drive, Drive C, I already have a folder named AAA Practice Documents. And so in that folder, I'm going to create a brand new folder. And I'm going to call this My Greeting Cards. And I'll open my greeting cards folder and then I'll create the name my first card and save. And now you can see that LibreOffice Writer has my first card open. First thing I'd like to do is I'd like to change the format of this page. Unlike the book where I have lots of page formats to create, in this, it, for greeting cards, I only need one page format. But let me go ahead and create it anyway. I'll go over to the property sidebar. I'll select styles. And in the styles side panel, I'll click select pages. And I'm in custom styles. And so I'm going to right click create a new page style that I'll, I'll call greeting card and the next style will be greeting card and here's where it gets to be important in the page tab it's eight and a half by eleven but I'm going to make the margins be a half an inch all the way around so I'll hit 0 0.5 tab 0 0.5 tab 0 0.5 tab 0 0.5 tab tab. By making all of these margins a half an inch, it will make it easier to calculate places or locations of the different sections of the greeting card. And now the first page is still using the default page style, so I'm going to double click on greeting card, and now I have my first page with the half inch margins all the way around getting things positioned properly on this card after it's folded up is a little bit tricky. So I'm going to use a technique to make that a little easier. You remember I took a piece of paper, folded it up, and I wrote my card front, my card back, my card... So now I find out that the card inside left has to be rotated upside down so that it'll be right side up after the card is folded. And the same with my card inside right. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to create some rectangles to use as to use just for spacing. Make it easier to position things on the different faces of the card. And to create those rectangles, I'm going to go here to view toolbars and I'm going to turn on the drawing toolbar. And there's the drawing toolbar now down there at the end. 
and you'll notice that I have all these different tools that I can use. I'm just going to choose the rectangle and now I, to create a rectangle I just click and drag. Not worried about the size until I have the rectangle there. Now I've done a little mathematical calculation so that I know where to put these different faces of the card or different sides of the card. So I'm going to right click on that rectangle and I'm going to select the position and size option. And what I would like to do is I would like to create a rectangle that's 3.25 by 4.5 and I'm going to anchor it to the page. From the left I'm going to put it one half inch in and from the top I'm going to put it one half inch down and let's see what happens. There's my composition rectangle. If I go back to the sidebar and I select properties I can see the characteristics of that selected rectangle. Right now by default the color is blue but I notice that this dark blue color, if I was going to print practice versions of this, would be using quite a lot of ink. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go over here and change the transparency to be about 85%. That way if I print out a practice version I won't be using as much ink. Now I need more pages of this, so I'm going to do the old copy and paste trick. With this, cop with this rectangle selected, I'll simply do copy, control C, and then I'll do control V. But wait a minute, what happened to the copy? Well, it went right on top of the original. So I can drag this over and position it there. Let me change the color of this one. And I still have that copied to the clipboard, so I can paste another one. Control V, only this one. I need to put down in this corner and I'll change that color to uh, orange. I need one more. Control V and I'll put this one down in its bottom corner and change its color to red. Okay, now I have these four rectangles but they're not exactly in the corner of that, that page margin. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to right click on that rectangle, choose position and size, and notice that, notice that it's the right size, but from the left is 0.57 inches and I need it to be 0.5. And from the top, I need it to be exactly 6 inches. Now, when I created these, I could have created these precisely to those dimensions, but it's easy enough to go and adjust them. Let's do it to this one. Right click, position and size, from the left, 4.75, 6 inches from the top, and I better check this one just to see how I did. Position and size, from the left, 4.74, that's very close, probably wouldn't notice that difference, 0.75, and half inch from the top. Okay, now I have the four rectangles to use for laying out the different pages of the card. Now I can start entering text. I'm going to start by putting some text on the front side of this card, the front page of this card. And down here in the toolbar, notice one of the options is Insert Text Box. Well, I could just click and start typing, but I'm going to click and drag a text box that's exactly the width of that rectangle, because that'll help me space the text on this front side of the card. And notice the cursor is flashing there. 
And also notice when I have a flashing cursor, I have the text tools here, and I can make that be in the center. I could also have done it over on the sidebar. So now I'm going to type in my first card and okay I'll click away from that now what if I wanted to edit this card or I'm sorry what if I wanted to edit this text I select the text and I get a text box and when I have the text box selected I can move it around. I can drag it here, drag it there, drag it every place. But I want to work on the text that's inside the box. So with the text box is selected, I can double click and get the cursor right into that. Now that the cursor is in that text, I can do all, all the different text things. So I'm going to do Control A to select all of the text. And I can either use the sidebar or the context toolbar for text up here. I think I'll make it bold. Notice that the font for that text is Liberation Serif. I prefer Liberation Sans Serif. Let me make this larger so you can see the difference here. I'm just going to keep increasing the font size. Now you notice with the serif style fonts, they have all these little hooks at the ends of the letters. If I change that to Liberation Sans Serif, those hooks disappear. Okay, so now I have text on the front of the card. I'd like to put the text on the inside car of the card, and that text goes here. So I'm going to create another text box, and put about like that. And now I need to go fetch some text. Either I need to type all the text, or I can cheat by go f going and, fe and going and finding some text. And I found some text to paste in there. Now I'm going to edit that text. I'm going to center it, and I'm going to make it a little bigger. Let me change the font. This time, let me use the, the old Comic Sans font. And let me make that font be bold. And I'm going to keep making it bigger. Oh, uh, that's okay. Now the problem is, as you can see, that text is right side up when the card is unfolded, but it'll be upside down when I fold the card. So the trick is I have to rotate this text. And the way I do that is I can select the text box itself rather than the text. And when I have the text box selected, I can go over here to the sidebar where I have position and size. By the way, if that's not open, there's a little minus sign. That position and size sidebar might be closed, so you hit the plus and it's open. And here's rotation. And I can just highlight that and enter my 180 degrees, which flips it. And when I click away, there it is. Now, suppose that I want to edit this. Well, if I go back here and select the text, well, I selected the text box. I have to select the text, I have to double click in that box. Notice that it flipped it right side up again. That's very handy for editing. And so I can do my editing. Uh, maybe I'll just select that word and I'll make that italic. And then when I'm done with my editing, I click away, and it's all taken care of. Okay, so now we've added text inside that gets rotated. Let's add a symbol, a graphic symbol, on the back of the card. And down here on the toolbar, we have all these symbols to pick from. Notice that there's a lot of them. There's hearts. There's a... Let's choose the smiley face. And with that smiley face selected, I get this little plus sign. Now I can click and drag the smiley face. Click, drag, and there it is. Once it's there, watch the cursor. When I get the cursor over that object, I get the four-way arrow so I can drag it around. I also can 
drag the corners to make it a different size. And I could also, if I'm not careful, I could get the thing there and change the size that way. Now when that's selected, that's a, that's a graphic object and so the context menu has changed from the text toolbars to the graphics tools. And I have a quick way to change the color. I'll change it to yellow. And there's a line around there. And that's the style. And let me change the line color to black. And let's change the line thickness. We can just click on this and, and watch what's happening down there until you have a line thickness that you like. Well, at this point, I've got some text on the front of the card. I've got a little graphic on the back of the card. I've got some text inside of the card that I had to flip. Let me just put something on this inside page. Let me put a graphic in there. So I'm going to select Insert. And I've opened up... Uh, and in File Explorer I've opened up a folder where I have a bunch of graphics that I use for these videos. I'm going to use the schoolhouse and I'm going to say open that. And by default it opens it and puts it in the center of the page. But I want it over here in this other panel. Let me drag it over there. Also let me make it a little smaller reposition it and now I need to rotate that graphic so again over here on the position and size area in in the sidebar I've got this rotation thing notice this little compass wheel here if I grab that little dot I can actually swing this around and rotate it manually or I can actually type in a precise value that I want now I have a graphic inside, well maybe on the front of the card, I'd like to have put a nice picture here. I'm going to go fetch a picture from Google Images. In Google Images I've entered mountain landscape, lots to pick from, how about this scenic mountain landscape. I'm going to left click on that once and over here I'm going to right click and say copy the image, then I'm going to go back to my card. And I'm going to control V, paste the image. Once again, it's much too big and it's not in the right place. No problem. I'll get this little corner here and I'll drag it down to the size that I want and I'll drag it down to the place that I want. Maybe make it a little smaller than that. You notice if I didn't have that rectangle, I couldn't visually uh, eyeball this into a good location on the front of the card. One more thing, as long as I have this graphic here, I'm going to right click on it. I'm going to say Properties. And in the Properties dialog box, I'll choose my old friend Borders. I'm going to have borders all the way around. And I'm going to add some padding, maybe about 0 0.1, uh, 0 0.12. And I'm going to check the uh, border size. It's a hairline. I'm going to make that more dramatic. I'll make it thick. And then I'm going to add a shadow, a drop shadow to this. And I'm going to change the color from gray to, oh, maybe a, a light green. And I'm going to make the drop shadow a little wider. Okay, let's see what that looks like. There it is. Now, now that I've completed the card and I'm ready to print, I actually don't need these colored rectangles anymore. They were just there to help line things up. So now it's simple to get rid of those. So I'm just going to click on the rectangle, delete it. Click on this rectangle, delete it. Click on this rectangle, delete it. I want to be careful that I'm not clicking on the image instead of the rectangle. Click on the rectangle, delete it. There's my card 
all ready for printing.